is Dr. Bev Knox and you are listening to my psychology tutorials, Learn Psychology While You Sleep. From conception onward, we are the product of a cascade of interactions between our genetic predispositions and our surrounding environments. Our genes affect how people react to and influence us. Forget nature versus nurture. Think nature via nurture. Our genes, when expressed in specific environments, influence our developmental differences. We are not blank slates. We are more like coloring books with certain lines predisposed. We are formed by nature and nurture. But what is the most influential component of our nurture? How do our early experiences, our family and peer relationships, and all our other experiences guide our development and contribute to our diversity? The formative nurture that conspires with nature begins at conception with the prenatal environment in the womb, where embryos receive different nutrition and varying levels of exposure to toxic agents. Nurture then continues outside the womb, where our early experiences foster brain development. The mark of our species, nature's great gift to us, is our ability to learn and adapt. Culture is the behaviors, ideas, attitudes, values, and traditions shared by a group of people and transmitted from one generation to the next. Human nature seems designed for culture. We are social animals, but more. Wolves are social animals. They live and hunt in packs. You and I enjoy things unknown to most of our century ago ancestors, including electricity, indoor plumbing, antibiotics, and the internet. Culture works. Other animals exhibit smaller kernels of culture. Chimpanzees sometimes invent customs using leaves to clean their body, slapping branches to get attention, and doing a rain dance by slowly displaying themselves at the start of rain and pass them along to their peers and offspring. Culture supports a species survival and reproduction by transmitting learned behaviors that give a group an edge. But human culture does much more. Thanks to our mastery of language, we humans enjoy the preservation of innovation. We see our adaptability in cultural variations amount our beliefs and our values. But humans in varied cultures nevertheless share some basic moral ideas. Even before we can walk, babies prefer helpful people over non-helpful people. Yet each cultural group even evolves its own norms, rules for accepted and expected expected behaviors. The British have a norm for orderly waiting in line. Many South Asians use only the right hand's fingers for eating. Sometimes social expectations seem oppressive. Why should it matter how I dress? Yet norms grease the social machinery and free us from self-preoccupation. When cultures collide, their differing norms often be futile. Should we greet people by shaking hands, bowing, or kissing on the cheek, knowing what sorts of gestures and compliments are culturally appropriate, we can relax and enjoy one another without fear of embarrassment or insult. 
When we don't understand what's expected or accepted, we may experience culture shock. Like biological creatures, cultures vary and compete for resources and thus evolve over time. Consider how rapidly cultures may grow. In a thin slice of history since 1960, most Western cultures have changed with remarkable speed. Middle class people fly to places they once only read about, but some changes seem not to be so wonderful and positive. Had you fallen asleep in the United States in 1960 and awakened today, you would open your eyes to a culture with more divorce and depression. You would also find North Americans like their counterparts in Britain, Australia, and New Zealand spending more hours at work, fewer hours with friends and family, and fewer hours asleep. Whether we love or loathe these changes, we cannot fail to be impressed by their breathtaking speed, and we cannot explain them by changes in the human gene pool, which evolves far too slowly to account for high-speed cultural transformation. Cultures vary, cultures change, and cultures shape our lives. Now let us review culture when it comes to abnormal behavior. Abnormal psychological functioning is deviant, but deviant from what? Our behaviors, thoughts, and emotions are different from those that are considered normal in our place and time. We do not expect people to cry themselves to sleep each night, hate the world, wish themselves dead, or obey voices that no one else hears. In short, abnormal behavior, thoughts, and emotions are those that differ markedly from a society's ideas about proper functioning. Each society and each culture establishes their own norms, stated and unstated rules for proper conduct. Behavior that breaks legal norms is considered to be criminal. Behavior, thoughts, and emotions that break norms of psychological functioning are called abnormal. Judgments about what constitutes abnormality vary from culture to culture. A society's norm grows from its particular culture, which is its history, values, institutions, habits, skills, technology, and arts. A culture that values competition and assertiveness may accept aggressive behavior where one that emphasizes cooperation and gentleness may consider aggressive behavior unacceptable and even abnormal. A culture's values may also change over time, causing its views from what we used to call abnormal behavior to now change to what we call normal behaviors. In Western society, for example, a woman seeking the power of running a major corporation or indeed of leading the country would have been considered inappropriate and even delusional a hundred years ago. Today, the same behavior is valued. Judgments about what constitutes abnormality depend on specific circumstances as well as on cultural norms. What may be considered normal in one culture or society may be viewed as abnormal in a different society or culture. It is very important for clinicians to understand their patient's cultural background before for diagnosing. This prevents the issue of misdiagnoses. Culture matters. Culture is real. 
Culture is a people's common history, values, institutions, habits, skills, technology, and art passed down from generation to generation.